Right now, Wiener's undeterred, continuing his quest for City Hall despite growing calls from many that it's time to get out of the race. Is it for the good of the city or his ego? Tonight, we'll let you weigh in. And next, fast food workers across the country, they went on strike today calling for a fair wage. Are you willing to pay more for your McMuffin in order to ensure that your service comes with a real smile? And later, what ought to happen to A-Rod? Word is the MLB is getting ready here with enough evidence out of this biogenesis lab scandal to look for a lifetime ban. Is that fair? We're going to get into that as well. A lot coming up this evening. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. It is a very busy evening, July 29th. We're getting into all that, plus news from the Pope over the past weekend in Brazil. But we begin tonight, where else, but with a race for City Hall. Latest mayoral poll, which just came out a couple hours ago, it shows that Anthony Weiner has dropped in the fourth place, but still showing up with a decent number. Compare that to just before the latest uh, sexting scandal where he was leading in the same poll conducted by Konepiak and a majority of Democratic voters in New York City now say that Anthony Weiner ought to drop out of the race. But in the meantime, for his sake, Weiner says he's staying in the race and he reiterated that in a fundraising email sent out to supporters earlier today. And on Sunday, he appeared at a Baptist church where the embattled mayoral candidate compared his personal life, get this, to a GPS device. Brothers and sisters, I've given it a lot of opportunities to say recalculating in my life. I have worn that machine out sometimes. Yeah, but today, Wiener's attempts at seeking forgiveness, they appear to be faltering. Over the weekend, his campaign manager quit and his visit to hurricane-torn parts of Staten Island overshadowed by the sexting scandal. Okay, that wasn't it. Unfortunately, there was an exchange that Anthony Weiner had with a Staten Islander, a woman. Let's uh, play the clip right here. Cut to it, all right? The exchange basically went along the lines of the woman called him out, said that he was disgusting, a shame. He offered to shake her hand, and she said, absolutely not. Who knows where it's been? And it was all captured on camera. Unfortunately, we didn't have it for you. Wiener, he also surprised some by saying that he would have no problem hiring a school's chancellor or a police commissioner with the same sexting proclivities. Meanwhile, pundits and politicians say wasted no time piling on. He is not qualified, not psychologically qualified to be mayor of the city of New York. What's mysterious to me is not will he get out, it's why did he get in? And I haven't really commented on this because Huma is a friend of mine, his wife, uh, and I deeply respect her. But at this point, it's absurd. He is not going to be the next mayor of New York. He is wasting time and space. Now, notably absent from her husband's side since their joint press conference last week is Wiener's wife, Uma Abedin. And uh, there's a lot to get into, so let's bring in our panel now. Jeannie Zaina, professor of political science from Iona College. She wrote a piece speaking about Uma Abedin. We'll get to that in a little bit. O'Brien Murray, Republican strategist, and a senior political correspondent, um, Andrew Whitman. All right. Jeannie, you're a pro when it comes to these polls. What surprised you more? And if we could bring up uh, the latest poll numbers that came out at 4 o'clock this afternoon, we'll talk over that in a second. Is it that Wiener still is polling at 16%, down from where he was before, um, but uh, still showing up there? Or secondly, that it seemed to be Bill de Blasio that seemed to be picking up the majority of the recent support here. Which one is it that uh, uh, there could be two different takeaways? Yeah, you know, I think those are both important takeaways. You know, Wiener has dropped 10 points now in this poll. He dropped nine points in the poll a couple days ago. So I think that's about on par. So that's not quite as much of a surprise. My feeling is his support will continue to drop as we go forward. So I think this may be the height that we see him reach. Although, you know, I don't see him going much below 12% probably. But I think you're absolutely right. Bill de Blasio, I think, is the big story here, the big winner. I think some people were predicting that some of the support for, from females may go to Quinn. Some of the support may go to Bill Thompson. And I think we've seen kind of a surprise in the fact that Bill de Blasio has seemed to come, you know, really come into his own in the last few days, the last Last week or so. So that, I think, is the big takeaway here. Yeah, I guess that's the question. The, the, who fills the void? Well, who the, gets that support? De Blasio also picks up that Brooklyn support, too. 
Because yeah. he, he is the other candidate from Brooklyn at this point, and Anthony represented parts of Brooklyn. He was from Brooklyn originally, as that district changed over the years to be Brooklyn and Queens. Uh, I think for me the thing that struck, struck me most, which was not a surprise, but the numbers where he dropped in support from women. Prior to that, this poll, he was actually ahead with women's support which that, blew that, me away. That, than Christine Quinn yeah. was, even after the first debacle of, of what he had when for, he for his When he post-resignation from yeah. Congress, after the, all that, he still was pulling better than with women. The thing that's, that's striking here is, number one, and we were talking about before we came on air, Andrew and I, about Thompson. I think Thompson's numbers are better than, than, they've, than they actually are. You and I have talked about this before, and on the show you've talked about it quite a bit. The black and Hispanic community are better than what his numbers appear to be uh, on that. But also, I think... Uh, when it because they the, the cell phones they they, yep. they can't call cell phones at that point. But I also think that Lou is is not going anywhere as we've all seen. That's become apparent that this justifies all the things going on there. Uh, the African American community though is supporting Weiner more than anybody else is. He's beating Quinn in the African American community, which I think will be the reason why Thompson comes up and and Weiner goes down. And just I, a quick calendar thing, Andrew. This is two races here because sure there's the race, but when they get to the runoff, then the whole dynamic and all the metrics change all over again. Um, when it probably get down to the two. So to that end, um, if you had a bet right now, you think Wiener stays in? I, I suspect he's going to stay in until the very end. I, he has nowhere else to go. And there's Although really we, nothing. we played that clip from David Axrod, who everybody knows, um, they were close apparently. He and, and we also didn't play it, but Dee Dee Meyer said over the weekend, mm -hmm. first that you know, she thinks but, absolutely Hillary wouldn't want him in, but then she backtracked and said she hadn't spoken to her. But, the uh, point is, people close to the Clintons um, and also people close to the establishment, they want him to go away. Well, but unless there's overwhelming pressure that's coming from the Clintons, I, you know, it, I doubt very much that Huma would have a role in, in Hillary's but, 2016 but campaign. So there's really, there's very little downside for them to stay in the race except to finish this thing through. If he gets out of the race, yeah. he's pretty much finished for his entire career. There's usually. really, I think, maybe three things you can look at here. Number one, he hasn't bought one ad yet. If, if I was advising him right now, I'd have an ad going up there, sort of an apology, but also about what he is and what he's going to be. Let him deliver the message to the, to the voters instead of the media message right now. Uh, Scott Stringer did a 2.1 2, 2 or $3 million ad buy going September 8th back yeah. to, to August at this point. Wiener can do some of that. He also, I don't see him dropping out because he has matching funds coming in right now for the city. But and if he, doesn't, if he doesn't stay in, those will be gone. And everybody should know, the campaign man is dropping out. It's, it's really a blip in the radar. He was running his own campaign for all intents and purposes. But, but I want to get to a different point, which is we all thought and still maybe did up until recently, extremely talented politician. Maybe a perv, maybe a creep, maybe somebody we would want to spend dinner with, but extremely talented. But he's been more than a bit unhinged here for the last couple weeks. I want to read one comment. Uh, Staten Island reporter... Um, Staten Island Advance, um, they did an interview with him, and this was obviously post the most recent sexting uh, scandal. And when he was asked what he would tell his 18-month-old son Jordan now about the scandal when he's old enough, we said, well, first of all, the kid's going to grow up in Gracie Mansion. He went on to say, though, so he said, I'm going to say, kid, don't complain. He said, I hope that what he sees is the value of what I'm trying to do here. I hope what he sees is what a good mayor I am, that the tolls were lower in Staten Island because his father was mayor. That coupled with uh, the odd statements of recalibrating with the GPS, trying to make some jokes here at some other times. Either he doesn't get the gravity of it or he thinks he'll just turn the charm offensive and this thing will disappear. Listen. Yeah. It, it, you know, it, it, sometimes when I listen to him now, it, it sounds a bit like, you know, the O.J. Simpson uh, syndrome where he doesn't seem to grasp the reality, as you mentioned, of what is going on here. He has absolutely zero chance of being New York City mayor. Everybody is saying he should get out. Yes, he can continue, and the voters can and should make that decision, but there is no possibility. If he loves these causes that he has fought for his whole life, as he says, he is not talking about those, and when he talks about them, nobody is listening. So he has zero chance of being mayor of New York City. The Democratic establishment has made that clear, from Nancy Pelosi to David Axelrod to everybody in between. I think the Clintons will, in fact, tell Uma to get him out, and when Uma decides that he's out, he is going to be out and he should be out. This is insanity. It has become a circus, and he is distracting the city from what should be a really serious campaign. Real Name quick, one issue we talked about. The other about. quick thing on that, though, the runoff was always Achilles' heel. We always said after the, the, the uh, well, primary... Well, he's not going to get there. Well, no, but, but after the primary, who's going to come and support him versus whoever yeah. he's against, number one. The Clintons 
if I was advising them, the thing I would do is I would send Huma on a legitimate trip with the Clinton Initiative. She does work for them. She has worked for him. Send her to Africa, no. Haiti. She can't no, no, do that she can't. Well, no, no, no. Campaign. That's the point, though. In other words, if she's out of town, she can't be there at that press conference. She can't be there to well, say. She him. didn't make any appearances just, this weekend. She doesn't but, have to do but anything. That's Real what they should be doing. Because we had a conversation last week, um, and you wrote about this recently about her role, and it was interesting because even over the weekend. More people chimed in about her decision to stand not only with him at the press conference, but to speak at the press conference. Um, and you had some thoughts on that. Yeah, you know, I, I really do think that, you know, we've talked a lot about Uma and, and her decision. Whatever reason she did, I do think it is an act that could potentially be empowering for her personally to make this decision. She has that choice. She made it. Now, I think if she decides to move her career forward politically, she's going to have some serious questions to contend with. And I should say that, number one, did you know when you did the People magazine piece and the New York Times piece what was going on? You know, we have no, you know, we don't know if she knew. She says, she gives the indication now she she did. That's really unclear. I'm not sure I buy that. But I do think this is a, an, an issue of empowerment. Look, we talk about the Clintons. Hillary Clinton, had she decided to leave Bill Clinton early on, would not be where she is now. And you could say the same thing about several political spouses. Although so I just think um, the consensus was she was definitely the better of the two before the scandal. She was uh, definitely the better of the two here. She has credibility with or without him at any point. If she left him after that public humiliation, no one would have faulted her for it, and she would have certainly had political prospects if she even wanted them. Um, I don't see the upside unless it's uh, the human dynamic, and I'm not supposing to say that there is one. But professionally, there was no reason to stand by and no reason to speak. When's the last time we saw a spouse speak when there was infidelities this is or also, something related akin to think, it? Think about all this, too. All the time she spent with Hillary Clinton, she spent with David Axelrod behind the scenes on staff. She was not the person out in the press. No. She was never out there. All the reporters that I've spoken to have a great affinity for her. They respect her, and they, 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 could, they will continue to do so. Yep. Why she chose this point to come forward is beyond me. All right, we got to hit a break. When we come back, though, we're going to talk about an issue here. Um, nothing to do with politics, although there are questions on a much broader level about where as a country we go. A fast food uh, strike here of sorts here. Workers across the country today making their opinion heard, calling for a wage hike. And the question I want to ask you at home is, even if you're sympathetic to them, are you willing to go in your pocket to support them? That's what we're asking you at home. Head to our Facebook and uh, Twitter accounts and sound off. Fast food strike is raising the minimum wage something you'd be willing to pay more for. That Next and later in the program, we'll have the Pope's stunning comments when it comes to homosexuality. He's believed to be the first Pope ever to use the word gay publicly. We'll tell you what he had to say in Brazil.